So in this video, I'm gonna to try to convert my Sherline lathe into a CNC. And you can see here, it's a basic setup that uh, I have finished. I'll walk you through what I need to do. It's all using uh, basically parts I bought on Amazon. Two uh, red parts you can see there, I machine those to hold the motor mounts onto the Sherline. And then a lot of open source software for an Arduino and it just loads on to either a PC or a Mac. Real, real nice project. Here's the parts I bought from Amazon, controllers, two stepper motors. And this is design, you can see this infusion. The thing I had the machine was that uh, piece in red and then also the piece in light green, I guess it is, which is the couple. Uh, to be able to mount the uh, motor onto the different lead screws of the lathe, both the X and the Z axis. Uh, so that couple was a fun part to design. I machined that on my Tormac. Uh, basically, you make it on a bridge port, et cetera, but uh, you know, the angle was nice on the Tormac to be able to cut. You don't have to do that. You can see what this part looks like. It's basically what Sherline shows on their uh, CNC conversion, so I, I took, took a lead from then. The thing that I worried most about was the Z-axis. You need to cut these two holes in the Z to mount that motor mount. Uh, in the X-axis, those holes are already there. So you can see I built this template so I can make sure I'm coming down right. It's a, it's a 29 drill, uh, getting ready for an 032 tap. And if you know those taps in steel, you can snap them. So I wanted to be super careful of getting that right. So you can see here, I'm taking my time. I'm using a dowel pin to locate those two holes. I'm locking that vise in place, making sure everything's you know square to where I want it to be. And then I'm gonna come down, you'll see with a tap guide. Um, and if you don't have one, these are extremely useful because you want to make sure that tap is going in straight. So the beauty of this, if you get your hole lined up on a drill press, and then you can mount these tap guys, they're basically just spring-loaded pins. And you'll notice on the end of your taps, there's usually an indent in there, it's just for this purpose. So that you can put that indent in that spring load, and it'll keep that tap going straight into the hole. And it made it extremely careful. I shouldn't have worried so much. You know, there was really no risk of breaking this tap. But I think it's due to just being you know, a clean setup and doing this thing right. And again, it worked out, uh, it worked out very well. So you can see those holes, um, they came in in dead nuts. They're just where they need to be. Uh, it worked out well, and you can see now I'm mounting that motor mount. So that mounts in with those two A32s. Um, this is the Z, the X axis. You can see those holes if you look carefully. They're already there. Those came from the manufacturer. I don't know if all Sherlines have it, but the one I, uh, the one I have did. You see the couple on the motor, that brass piece, um, and then that motor just screws right in. 1024 screws I made tapping into the aluminum. Uh, but put that in place. So you can see there I'm locking in that couple so it locks on the lead screw, get everything uh, tight. And there you can see I've got these motors mounted up. Uh, the encoders on the wheels aren't there yet. I had to make little mounts that can bolt onto the end of the stepper motor. There's some small uh, number three metric screws uh, that you can use. But here you see the test. I went to Fusion, I took a very simple design I made and just seeing could I make this part. And this, of course, outputs a G-code from Fusion 360. Then I wrote that G-code to the open source program, Open uh, G-Code Sender. And this is what you can drive your, uh, your CNC, whatever you want to make uh, with it. It does all kinds of things, but it can drive a lathe, of course, with just two axes. And here's it running. Um, you see that program starts off at Z, it goes back and gets the hold position, making sure everything looks good. And then, like any CNC, you just hit run and go. And you can see this thing it worked extremely well. It came out right to tolerance first time. And this was a lot easier. There's a little bit of calibration you need, because uh, you got to calibrate uh, those stepper motors for your application but that open G-code sender has all the calibration routines in it. Really amazing program. It makes it so approachable to uh, make your own. For the Arduino, you can buy um, shields on top of the Arduino. 
that can drive four CNC's, but the motors I used are a little bit uh, large for that uh, shield, so you can just buy those controllers on Amazon or anywhere else. Uh, and they're really not too much. So it's surprisingly inexpensive to make this conversion. I think all in, I probably got $150. Uh, but you'd be surprised how easy this project was. Really encourage it. It's going to be a great tool for me uh, going forward. I'm happy I did it. So hope you enjoyed. If you did, please subscribe. I'll be back making another clock after this. Uh, I got a little more to do, so we'll see you soon.